G'day folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve this hexagonal prism. This, believe it or not, is a 3x3 shape mod. And that means that it's going to have weird bits going on. So the first thing to do is identify centres and corners and edges. We can see that when we turn that, this bit here just rotates in position. So that is our centre. And that means that if that's the centre, these bits coming off are the edges. Centre, centre you'll notice that all of the edges are either rectangles or trapezia. And then the corners are going to be these other bits here. So all of these kind of, do they all look the same? I think they actually do. So, oh yes, there's two little corners like that, which are actually in the center of the um, prism. So once we've identified that, that's going to make it easier for us to solve. So as we scramble it, we just need to make sure that things are lined up. As we're turning them, all the edges are lined up, and then we can go ahead and scramble as we normally would. Um, and it shouldn't take too long to get it to a point where it's unrecognizable. And the method that I'm going to use to solve this puzzle is the same method that I'd use for a 3 by 3 cube an edges first method it's a simple method and as the name suggests it's just placing all of the edges before the corners and then doing the corners at the end and all I'm trying to do now is get this as scrambled as I can it actually looks reasonably good uh, that'll probably do I reckon okay so the first step here is kind of to set the centers up first, to align the centers with each other. And what I mean by that is, well, if we start with this white, purple, blue center, if we've got it correctly aligned, then I guess these other colors here should also match, these purple ones. So the blue matches there. Now that white has to match, but the white needs to be flush with that one. So that's now matched. You can see the orange matches. Um, this one's not quite right, so we'll turn that. The reds match, the whites match, and in fact now all of our centers match, and already you can sort of almost see, hmm, maybe I could just make out a hexagonal prism shape there. Maybe not. But that's the first step. I'll start with any center and start by basically making the white cross. And you can see that one of the edges is already in there, so that's good. I'll look for another one. This has got to be a pure white um, trapezium. And so that belongs underneath. The way to check if it's going to work, I'll turn it up. Whoops, I won't do that. Turn it up and you can see that it's in place but it's flipped. And so if that's going to happen, then what I need to do is turn that off and turn its position down, turn it onto its position and then undo those moves. So all of these edges will be placed just using the edge piece series. That's also put a red into position which I'll take and now I've got the last edge which will be a yellow. That'll be a rectangle wherever it is down the bottom and this one I guarantee will go into position because it's a rectangle so I can't just turn it up because it's not aligned to here but if I turn it off and then turn it to position and then put it back on then I may indeed turn it up. And if we look at it like that, we can see that that white cross has now been completed. I'm going to turn that upside down, call that the bottom face, and now place four of these middle layer edges. So I can see that the purple can just be turned down, down, up, up. Moving around, I've got a white trapezium and the long edges at the top so that tells me that that can also be down down up up moving along and the green and I only look to place three of these edges because I'm going to use the fourth as sort of a uh, a dummy edge and I'm going to place the two at the back so opposite that fourth middle edge there'll be two at the back what are they well got an orange and a blue so I can see that 
I can get the orange into there just by turning its position around. Or in fact, before I do that, I should have pointed out, I've got to make sure the center is correct. That center is correct. But if I'd started with it there, you can see the orange and the gray match, which is no good. So uh, I happen to have it correct, but that's what you must check first. Now I know that that's the orange position. I can turn it around, put it on, undo those moves. Okay, then I want to place this blue one at the back. Well, once again, I can cycle those three pieces, which will place the blue into its position, and that'll leave me three pieces to go. Now, a very cool part of this puzzle um, is what you're seeing at the moment, which is We've got this grey trapezium in, we've got this grey trapezium in, and we've got this last grey trapezium which is flipped. Now that's bizarre. Normally you can't get a single flipped edge on a 3x3 three three cube, but because of the shapes of these edges, we certainly can. So if we think about it, we say, well, what do you mean flipped? How can only one be flipped? Well, actually two are flipped, that one's flipped, and let's say this is flipped, or maybe it's this one. It doesn't matter. We just need to choose another rectangle that's flipped. And when we have two flipped pieces, we involve a third piece. We turn one of them onto the third and do a down, down, up, up like that. And then we look and see of these three pieces, two will go in correctly if we turn them. So obviously the blue will be one of them that does. What about... Uh, this one. If I'm going that direction, then the pieces are coming this way. Does this one go in correctly? Or go... Yep, that's right. If I try to turn that one up, I'll see that that goes in incorrectly. So that tells me that whatever that piece is, I've got to turn its position first, and then turn it onto its position, and then undo those turns, like that. And when we turn that back, we'll see that now we don't have that single flipped edge. So I'm really glad that happened. That is a pretty cool thing of this puzzle. And all the edges are now done. And you can see this is certainly starting to look more like the shape that it should. So the last stage of the solve is to place the corners. And obviously we've got these two little corners. Um, we might as well go and place them now because it may open up another interesting bit at the end. So I'm just going to look to be using the corner piece series here to roll pieces into position. So I can see that if I just roll that along an edge, that white corner will go into position. Yet, you may be wondering, well, how do we know if it's oriented correctly? Well, that's one of the interesting things. So if my pieces are moving anti-clockwise, then I do a clockwise turn of the upper face to begin with. And you can see that that white corner has gone in. Now, what about this sort of piece here, this green, orange, grey? Again, I'm looking to roll that into position. So if I hold it like this, I can see that when I roll across the back edge, if I can hold that, that rolls in beautifully. So the green matches, that orange is going to match with that edge there. So that tells me that the piece movement will be a clockwise piece movement, an anti-clockwise turn of the upper face first. Here we go, and that also is in. So the nice thing about this method is there's no order for the corners. You do them in whatever works. What have we got here? We've got... Um, the purple, grey, blue can roll across the back again like that. So this time that piece movement. Looking good, looking much more like a hexagonal prism as we move along. What can be next? Uh, that one's in position but twisted. The, where does this one go? The purple, white, red. 
goes down to here which is kind of opposite which is no good at the moment so is this one um, what we might do is just think if I move that to there can I get the green next to it no I can't what about if I move it one further um, no that's opposite so we'll abandon that line of thought forget about this one for the moment we might think about this one so if I move that up to there I'm remembering that this is the red edge that is next to the red edge so I'm looking to roll it so that the purple matches and when it does that red edge will also match so that looks pretty good I can roll like that and I've got one two and I'm looking for another piece that I can use so I'll just turn that grey small corner up for my third of the three pieces and that's been carried out I'll undo my two setup moves that was one of them and the other one you remember was this one and you'll see the red now matches nicely there what have we got left we've actually got this one in position and this one in position but twisted and again a very very cool thing of this puzzle is we've got our last two that need to be twisted now this one needs to be twisted clockwise this one needs to be twisted clockwise ordinarily on a three by three that cannot happen if it does someone's fiddled with your cube you're going to have one needing to be twisted clockwise the other anti-clockwise or you're going to have three that need to be twisted in the same direction so the reason we get this on this puzzle is because we have one of these little pieces here the white or the gray that's also twisted in the same direction twisted clockwise in this case um, the other possibility would be to simply have a single corner that is twisted out of position and again what that would mean is if that was the only corner and that had to go clockwise it would mean that this one also had to go anti-clockwise so as it is we've got a couple of corners here that we're going to twist there's a couple of methods that you could use to deal with them um, one method is to take them out of their positions with that one and put them back in with a corner piece series and in fact I probably might do that method the other method is to twist them in their position using some edge piece series but I think for now I'm going to take them out of their positions first of all so that that and that I'll involve first to move them And that having been done, what I'll see is that I now have three corners which I need to place. And I'm now going to try and place them to roll correctly. So I can see that either of these, that one could roll there, that one could roll there. So let's attempt, make it easy on ourselves. If that rolls there and that is my second piece, then I'm going to grab the third piece here. And the problem with it is I can't just go, well, I'm going to move that up into that position because if that goes across there, I know it'll be correct because it may not be necessarily correct. So I've got to think about where that came from. And in terms of that, uh, in fact, because of that, what's going to be even better and easier to do instead of having that as my third piece is to have this as my first rolling to there and then in fact it's going to be what's it going to be yeah it's going to be rolling to there and then having that as my third piece to put it up here because this one I can definitely say what position it needs to be in here to roll across to there so let's see what I'm talking about well if I start by moving it on the down face and putting it up in that position we'll see does that make sense when it rolls and I'll look at it and I'll go oh look at that beautiful that is definitely where it needs to be so all we've had there are two setup moves we've had a down face turn 
and then this right face turn. That's all I need to remember and I now know that those three pieces will correctly place. That's done them. Undo those setups. And that's how you think your way through those last corners and you can see that the hexagonal prism is solved.